They blast walls, attack buses, and go to any height to get their name seen. Just to get known, fame. They call themselves taggers. Band together in groups called crews with as many as 500 members. It's not just any other crew, it's more like a family. And they are making a science out of massive vandalism. It's fun, you know, we do it because we like it. But as the taggers cross out each other's names, violence is erupting. We shoot whoever we want. At least 30,000 taggers are on the streets. Most of the other taggers around, they they fighting now, you know. And today, the hiss of the spray can competes with the crack of the gun. My son is dead. This is Tagger Wars, a Fox News special report. It is about 9 o'clock at night. A small figure leaps from the darkness and shinnies up the pole that supports a gigantic freeway sign. He is a tagger, someone who spray paints initials all over the city. On the street, what you are watching now is called going to the heavens. It feels, you know, free, like, just free. It's just me, myself, and my can, spray can. All the people, they don't realize, you know, how it feels. It's wonderful for us. One false move, he falls 30 feet into a wall of speeding traffic, and most likely, he dies. His nickname is Strobe. He belongs to a group called STK. He is only 16 years old. And some of them, like, they don't want to risk their lives. But for me, like, fun. It's like an adventure to us, you know. We do heavens for fame, mostly for fame. So you could be known. But notice, before writing his own name on the sign, Strobe painted the letters STK. It is the name of his crew. 300 kids devoted to massive vandalism they call tagging. The initials stand for shoot to kill. Shoot to kill! And STK is only one of hundreds of tagger crews that spread across Southern California. Lone wolf graffiti vandals have spawned an entire new group subculture separate from street gangs. Here in the Florence Firestone area, Several of the crews party together. They, bl they blast walls, attack buses, and go to any height to get their names seen. Just to get known, fame. They call themselves taggers. Band together in groups called crews with as many as 500 members. It's not just any other crew, it's more like a family. And they are making a science out of massive vandalism. It's fun, you know, we do it because we like it. But as the taggers cross out each other's names, violence is erupting. We shoot whoever we want. At least 30,000 taggers are on the streets. Most of the other taggers around, they they fighting now, you know. And today, the hiss of the spray can competes with the crack of the gun. My son is dead. This is Tagger Wars, a Fox News special report. It is about 9 o'clock at night. A small figure leaps from the darkness and shinnies up the pole that supports a gigantic freeway sign. He is a tagger, someone who spray paints initials all over the city. On the street, what you are watching now is called going to the heavens. It feels, you know, free, like, just free. It's just me, myself, and my can, spray can. All the people, they don't realize, you know, how it feels. It's wonderful for us. One false move, he falls 30 feet into a wall of speeding traffic, and most likely, he dies. His nickname is Strobe. He belongs to a group called STK. He is only 16 years old. And some of them, like, they don't want to risk their lives. But for me, like, fun. It's like an adventure to us, you know. We do heavens for fame, mostly for fame, so you could be known. But notice, before writing his own name on the sign, Strobe painted the letters STK. It is the name of his crew, 300 kids devoted to massive vandalism they call tagging. The initials stand for shoot to kill. Shoot to kill! And STK is only one of hundreds of tagger crews that spread across Southern California. <laughs> Lone wolf graffiti spread across Southern California. Lone 
lone wolf graffiti vandals have spawned an entire new group subculture separate from street gangs. Here in the Florence Firestone area, several of the crews party together. The crew is, in fact, the center of their lives. This 16-year-old, known as 179 and convicted of vandalism, tonight fled house arrest to be with his crew. Ah, I ain't gonna listen to no police or my family. I gotta do what I want to do. Kick it with the homies from SDK for Police estimate there are a minimum of 30,000 kids in tagger crews in L.A. County alone. And vandalism is their game. Armed with spray cans and grease pens, their trail marks the city like an infectious disease. But they don't see it that way. Everybody watch out for him. Everybody watch out for him. They see it as a game to write crew and nicknames as many times and as many places as possible. It is called getting up. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. And in this world of taggers, getting up is all important. It makes you feel proud. These walls in Linwood mark the stopping grounds of MKA, Meanest Kings Alive. We bad, ruthless. The oldest is only 15. You won't see their faces, but you will hear why tagging is so important to them and the thousands of other teenagers just like them. It's so, so we can get known for respect. All these people know about me, and, and I don't know, I feel good about it. That's a reputation you get right there. Right there, you're respected because you're up. It's better than gangbanging. There's nothing else to do. It's more of a you know. And the taggers have it down to a science. <laughs> Striking in large groups at one time, they call it mobbing. There are those who work the dangerous freeway signs called the heavens, and those who dare to go even higher. Gives you a, a high, a good adrenaline. Like this tagger named Jimmer hanging from a seven-story window. Come on, man! But perhaps it's crews of bus killers that draw the most attention, as they daily swarm RTD bus stops all over the city. RTD buses are attractive targets for a very simple reason. Let's try to get your name on something that'll, uh, like, transport from one place to another. A lot of people see you. Hell yeah, baby! So crews hit buses from outside and inside, even using metal tools called scribes to etch crew names into bus windows. Get it! Get it! Aggressive taggers will hang on to the back of a bus for several blocks while they blast it with paint. But to decide who is really king of the buses, rival crews regularly schedule actual contests called battles. We get like a, a, a certain period, like let's say uh, a week or something. Whoever writes more in that week, they win. Crews like LC or Loving Crime hit as many as 20 buses a day. A battle can scar as many as 200 buses in a week. They fight for spray cans, or in what is known as a takeout, the losing crew agrees to retire their name. So they ain't taking CLK from me. CLK, crazy little kids, and CD, causing disaster, have been battling now for a week. They have assembled in this southeast L.A. park, where a previously selected judge will count passing buses to determine the winner. You don't get shot, and instead of shooting at each other, you ride against each other. But the taggers cost the county tens of millions of dollars a year in cleanup and law enforcement. Oh, run! Run! RTD police in particular have a battle going on all their own. Unfortunately, the tagging vandals don't seem to mind at all. Part of the fun is we don't always do it to be wanted. Yeah. That's some dumbass police, man. Let's say that last time they chased me, they didn't even catch me. It's fun, man. It's just like adventure. The taggers, with contempt in their voice, call those who go after them heroes. Meanwhile, RTD offers a reward to those who help stop the vandals, and offenders are arrested daily. But many taggers say they are addicted. You can't stop writing. It's like your hands are always in that motion. It's just addicting. Like a drug, if you could call it that. You know, you just always want to be writing. Always writing. But today, it is going from writing to guns, bullets, and death. A trend even tagger crews say is beginning to spray their world with the color red. 
That story next. Yeah. Somebody sees it, that's fame, you know. It goes back so many times that someone's got to see it, you know. No one's blind to the, you know, the graffiti. They, they see it, they just see it as like a blotch or something, but... You know, writers that write their name, like, clean, and they can read it, like, whirl with, you know? He bombed it or whatever. And so RTD police and shit, they come, they come to check your hands. They make, they tell you to turn your hands over back and forth like that to see if you got ink and shit on your hands. Yeah. She's like, I got ink on my hands, you know, for spraying the water down the way. And, uh, like, usually, you know, they make you turn your hand over, and you know if you got some, um, if you got paint on your hand, and, you know, marker ink, and they, and, you know, if it's fresh and shit, <laughs> they be like, they just be like, <laughs> they gonna take you in, you know, gank you or something. A lot of ways of getting caught, you know, people could snitch on you, like, even my own friends could probably snitch on me, I'll say, yeah, I'm coming here. So the difference between illegal and illegal is, Legal is um, really hard to find, you know, if you can find it, that's cool. But illegal is mostly what kids do. That's why we bomb the streets. Um, I think this dude's gonna talk shit to us, I don't know. Hey, you guys, you know you're trespassing here? That's how you? Yeah. What do you see it? Drop the bed You draw that picture? No, we didn't draw none of these pictures. We just, we're, we're trying to show the public this is what kids do, you know, before they start doing drugs or... I want you guys to leave this place, otherwise I'll call the police. That's the final word? Yes. Out. Oh. Are uh, you the owner, sir? Yes. You want to leave this here or you want to go over the wall? Yeah, let's just go over the wall again. We'll go over the wall. You came over the wall? Yeah, we came over the wall. Who you represent? Huh? Who you present? We present the public. Why you don't come inside and ask me if you can get in? We didn't know whose property it is. We had no idea. Well, you think a property like this is living for with nobody? No, nah, I think this place just burned down in this open lot. We didn't know. I mean, we're not trying to do anything illegal here. We're just trying to show the public, you know, via video, you know, that, you know, what, what happens. Well, who are you to show the public? You represent anybody? I, I am the public. You are the public. You don't, you don't want to be educated? You sh if you were educated, you would have come to my place and asked me if I can go inside and do the thing. Well, I thought, it was actually, I thought it was actually these people's property. I asked them, and they said, well, the Mandarin Inn and all this kind of stuff. So, I mean, they never told us or nothing. Like, this is our second time here, you know? If you promise not to come again, you can do your picturing and leave. Oh, yeah? All right. I, I don't want to see anybody over here again. All right. We're going to paint all this thing white. All right. And from Monday, there will be a police escort over here. Anybody comes here, we're going to arrest them. All right. The degree there? Yes, I put the grease on it. Well, how come you did that, sir? Because we don't want it here. They start abusing it. Look what they did on our walls inside. Look what they did on the garbage can. Look on my walls. They start abusing it. Yeah. Those are people that are just suckers, probably. Everybody yeah. tells me Not that. Talented. I don't... How can I tell who is the guy? Uh, Every talent. time I saw people coming over here, I said, where are you from? I'm from North Hollywood. Yeah. They have no other place to come all the way from North Hollywood to here to f*** up my wall. No, I don't, we don't know about that. We're just trying to um, show, it's sort of artwork, you know, it's sort of pretty. You have a house? Yeah, I have Go a house. Go and do this thing on your house, on your wall. Let me see what your dad does. Uh, he'll probably sit, you know, he'll probably have a heart attack. I thought you called it artwork. It is, but I mean, he doesn't like it. He doesn't like, he doesn't like it as much as you well, do. somebody else Because he thinks, he thinks it's illegal, but I mean, it's just the way that kids get out, you know, they don't do bad shit. Like, you know, when they start coming here, they were nice guys like you. And I said, please don't filter the place. They say, yep, yep, yep. Don't overlap over the neighbors and put all the walls and filter it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, everybody starts complaining. Yeah. And they can be as nice as you want to say. That's true. But if they don't keep their word, if they f up everything else, that's what happens. Yeah, well, we're now not Now it has to cost me $500 to, to clean all this thing, and I don't know, I'm sorry. I don't know how I'm going to keep track of it. I had to call the police. They said, call us, we'll arrest them. Yeah. I hate to do that for young kids. Yeah, we understand But that. if you think it's hard to work, go and do it in your house and see what your father does. All right. But if you got somebody else's property next time, you should ask permission. Can I go in? Okay, we didn't know, so we're sorry. We, if we thought of yours, we would ask you. If you want to do, go and hurry up and leave. All if right. you see anybody else, I want you to kick him out. All right. Hey, okay. All right. Thank you. You're still taking my picture? Yeah, this is the shit we got put up with all the time, man. People just like, oh, we hate it, oh, we hate it. How would you like you to do this on your house? And 
Scoob Dabba Doom and yeah, it's famous by and cops like to say it, bus people, everybody that I can say that. How would you like that? I said I would like it, but I mean if you said I would like it then I get some more pissed off and <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> You can't win, you know. The most prolific graffiti artist pleaded no contest today to 10 misdemeanor charges. Daniel Ramos, who uses the moniker Chaka, is believed responsible for causing a half billion dollars in property damage. The 18-year-old could face a possible five-year jail term and $10,000 fine. Tomorrow night at 6, you'll hear my exclusive interview with Chaka, and you'll see these defiant vandals in action on the streets of Los Angeles in a special report on graffiti, right here on Eyewitness News at 6. Using infrared technology from the Persian Gulf War, Channel 7's Harold Green exposes these vandals at work, takes you inside their underworld, and shows you our community fighting back. L.A.'s epidemic, graffiti. It is everywhere. Now this week, Harold tells us about the people who are leaving their marks all over. Yeah. Laura, call them graffiti taggers, graffiti writers, or spray can artists. They are, in the mind's eye of most people, vandals who are turning the city of angels into a visual hellhole. Their sole purpose is to tag other people's property with their unsightly initials, names, or gang affiliation. The more times they do it, the wider their fame. The goal is to be number one, or at least in the same league as the infamous Chaka. Friday night on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, three young men while away the evening. But unlike the thousands of other young people who are in Hollywood tonight looking for a good time, they're under police surveillance, specifically the guy in black wearing the backpack. The cameraman posing as a tourist is a cop. He's trying to nab the infamous graffiti writer known as Chaka. What's this for, sir? Whoops, whoops. What's that? What's that? What? What is that? Did you do that? Nah, that's my friend. Who, what's his name? Huh? What's his name? Chaka. What's your name? Daniel. According to police, Daniel is Chaka. But not anymore since I'm here. Here is the Metropolitan State Mental Hospital in Norwalk, where 18-year-old Daniel Ramos is under observation while awaiting sentencing on 10 counts of misdemeanor vandalism and trespassing. Police say his Chaka tag is linked to half a million dollars damage from Orange County to San Francisco. At the height of the spraying frenzy, it seemed like Chaka could be seen on walls, freeways, lampposts, and even the main water tower in the town of Koalinga. The name Chaka comes from what? From this TV show, Land of the Lost. Daniel joined hundreds of other young people armed with spray cans and marking pens who compete with each other to get up. In other words, to write their stylized nickname or tag in as many places as possible. Did you work alone? Yeah, alone. During what hours? From 10 to 5. 10 at night until 5 in the morning? Yeah. How many cans of spray paint would you go through in that time? Around 8 to 10. He sprayed so much that he kept a map that was marked with areas he'd already hit. Where did you guys get the money for all this spray paint? For the stealing racket. That's what it's called, rack. This high school dropout who grew up in Aliso Village says his biggest challenge was spraying chaka on the back of those huge signs that hang high over the freeways. So how did he get up there? I just used a belt, a belt, a leather belt. I threw it around the pole and caught it with the other hand. Climbed, made my way up there. Like a log climber? Yeah. Like a logger going up a tree? Yeah. Nobody called the highway patrol? Nobody, nobody called, called the called, police? Nobody seen me at the time. How long were you up there? For about an hour. You were on the sign for an hour and nobody saw you? Did anybody honk their horns, flash their lights, or no, any such thing? No. Were you wearing all black? I was black? doing it at four, four in the morning. Four in the morning. Were you wearing all black or something? All black. Yeah. Mm. Kind of like the stealth tagger, huh? Yeah. He was arrested four times as a juvenile, but never prosecuted. The authorities say they're seeking jail time so that other taggers will get the message. Well, a lot of people ask me why do I do it. Sometimes it's hard for me to answer that. I say it's a freedom of expression or a better way expressing the art for many people the idea that taggers who cause hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage could be considered artists is laughable for daniel ramos it could also be costly on may 1st he could be sentenced to five years in jail and fined ten thousand dollars it's no use tagging tagging's no good yeah i just like the art tomorrow we'll go underground and watch graffiti vandals on a spraying rampage 
Ramos, in a plea bargain yesterday, agreed to 1,500 hours of erasing graffiti and not to possess spray paint or marking pens for at least a couple of years. Fascinating about how he got up there. I think we've all wondered when we yeah. drive by how a person would get up that mm -hmm. high. There's a lot of stories of how they've done it, and uh, he explained it, put his belt around it, hoisted himself up there. Hmm. Wish he could channel that energy towards something else. We all do. Well, to report so on much, graffiti. Yeah. Like dogs marking their spots, graffiti writers are stinking up the area. These nights, teenagers with spray paint cans are everywhere. And despite the efforts of police or recent state legislation to suspend a convicted graffiti artist's driver's license for a year, there's no let up. This man is a bomber, but instead of explosives, he uses spray paint and marking pens to cause widespread damage throughout Los Angeles. His mission on this moonless night is to bomb or spray his graffiti tag nacho all over the walls of the northbound Pasadena freeway in Elysian Park. Acting on a tip, we captured Nacho on tape using a night vision scope similar to those used by our troops in the Persian Gulf War. He'll spray multicolored block lettering that has become a visual eyesore to motorists in the Southland. Two other taggers, Sleaze and Cab, join in and quickly begin bombing as the cars whisk by at two in the morning. We're just out bombing, just bombing LA, freeways and all permanent spots. Yeah, the spray can art. Everybody wants to know how come. This is our thing to do, you know, like, our options are easier as a teenager to sell drugs or gangbang. I think this is a more positive thing to go, you know, do our artwork. Nacho Sleaze and Cab make up one of the most notorious graffiti crews around. They're on Caltrans Most Wanted list for defacing state property. They appear to spray everything that isn't moving. They call it art. And they say whether they're tagging their names, bombing large letters, or spraying murals, it's addictive. The one known as Cab to hundreds of thousands of commuters meanders across the four-lane freeway and begins to bomb the crew's name. It's L-O-D. It like has a, it's the name of our crew. L-O-D has a lot of different meanings. Uh, it's um, looking our direction, um, Legion of Doom, Los Santos. And it doesn't have to be dope like you think, you know? Dope can be just good, you know? Um, it's just a, a graffiti art crew, you know? What do you think when you hear people say that we don't like this? We don't want this in our community. What is graffiti, you know? I think some of those billboards are graffiti to me. They don't give us much of an option. Like I said, they really don't, you know? Their way of both going ba of ballot is let's put them in jail. You know, what good does that do, you know? Where are the police? Do you ever see the police? Mm, they go by when I'm, you know, when I would be out there, they would go by and they actually can't see you. I've seen other friends doing it. Mm -hmm. And you can't see, you know, it's just, it's wild. By their own admission, they steal the paint using half a dozen cans a night. They told me they don't have jobs or go to school, which isn't surprising when you consider they're out nearly every night spraying from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Our goal is like to do everything from the tagging, the bombing, and it's to be all city. That's what it's all about, to be all city L.A. <laughs> Last year, Caltrans spent $600,000 removing graffiti like this in L.A. and Ventura counties. In less than 30 minutes, Nacho and crew have finished this bombing mission, and they silently slip off into the night to strike again. Tomorrow, we'll meet two women who are fighting back, and we'll find out what you can do to fight back. Speaking of fighting back, radio station Power 106 FM is sponsoring the Model Neighborhood Cleanup Campaign which is encouraging neighbors to unite to restore L.A. neighborhoods by removing graffiti and litter. Now, the next one is this Saturday at Hyde Park, the following Saturday, May 4th, at Ramona Gardens and in South Central Los Angeles on May 11th. I think many of us are surprised to find out that these kids are not members of gangs who are doing this. Well, they are, in fact, social gangs. They don't have the gang affiliations that we're familiar with, but we can't qualify them or categorize them as social gangs. Okay. Right. Thank you. It's been fascinating. We'll look forward to it tomorrow. On thousands of buildings. 20 year old Daniel Bernardo Ramos was arrested late last night. He's accused of possessing and trying to sell three small bags of marijuana worth about $30. Authorities say he was caught trying to make a sale at the Aliso Village housing project near downtown Los Angeles. Ramos is accused in 1990, arrested in 1990, accused of causing more than half a million dollars in damage by vandalizing buildings with graffiti. He was sentenced to probation and community service. Since then, he's been arrested twice more. 
accused of vandalism again and possession of marijuana. He is currently being held without bail. <laughs> Born in L.A., it's hard to get started. Born in L.A., so I always keep my guard up. Born in L.A., plus still where I stay. Every day, every day, every day. I'm from a city that breeds death, multiple shots firing, home of the violent, niggas violent, half city, half island. I was born in the wood, raised in the San Fernando Valley where there's essays and mostly bloods. Big family, so I had cousins from different hoods that taught me the landscape of the city and I was good. Tripping by the desire to document the lives under fire, then presented to you through the wire. Had to struggle with gang codes and navigate a path through the maze of Los Angeles, becoming a man. Hopes become smoke in the lung, beer in the can. These streets respect killers, and I'm just a man. But yet it's still its innards. Remember the chase told you. The nation is infected by LA gang culture. I'm an ordained reporter. Live from the center, well respected as an artist in the thorough street, nigga. Yeah, my birthplace, my home. And I'll be buried on prairie across the street from where I was born. In LA, in LA, in LA. Born in L.A., it's hard to get starstruck Born in L.A., so I always keep my guard up Born in L.A., plus still where I stay Every day, every day, every day uh, I'm from a place where stars are born Weather is never cold, hearts are never warm The gang capital, nighttime injection Cut life, it's lethal And daytime's a sunny place for shady people that support My father stole his son out the hospital No loot was to stop in his joy had it popping, raised in Santa Monica to the divorce, six years old, I couldn't see what was coming, of course, the plan, mom bounced on old man, then we moved to the Venice sand, a young youth, seen gangs firsthand, fake address for school, two educations, rich friends, then back to my land, you was hard where I'm from, it's a well-known fact, whether a white cat, brown or black, when you heard shots, it was never from starter pistols. Every night, 4th of July, launch your missiles. LA is different since my best friend's gone. Some moved locations, some just moved on. The neighborhood changed and new faces came along. Had me asking myself if this a place I belong. My hustle is strong, I'm up before them. Rap, caffeine, marathon long, determined. Venice, California, A, 90291. Let's go, let's go. Born in LA, it's hard to get started. Born in LA, so I always keep my guard up. Born in LA, plus still where I stay. Every day, every day, every day. I got a sick sense for danger, man. A second hand nature for war. The biggest rivals in my city's the law. I'm from that Pico Union district, homie. Fuck what you thought. We got trees, windows, and raw. Whatever you want. I'm just a pawn in that federal plan to get us all on. A nice little high, shoot each other for crumbs. One by one, die from wars that's one by none Some might come and make a bastard out of my son So I'm strapped with a gun Making sure the axes that come from my body Are only from medicine passed through my lungs I got that downtown psyche Cortez with a Nike logo Logos like me treating pipes like wifey's Buying up with stallion rocks nightly Don't take my block lightly We're screwed up like everybody in the world might be Born into union in 17 Thought the woman in the 70s Rapping Los Angeles through musical melodies Born in LA, it's hard to get starstruck. Born in LA, so I always.